When Abdul Baha arrived on April 11th, 1912, on the steamship Sudrick, it was Lua Getzinger, May Maxwell, and Julia Thompson's great joy and privilege to be with Abdul Baha constantly and to serve him. They followed him from city to city, arranging his appointments, preparing his apartments, receiving his many guests and the seekers who streamed to him day after day and far into the night. When they tried to protect him from these demands, when he was weary due to exhaustion, it was not permitted, for he always insisted that every guest, especially the poor and humble, be shown utmost courtesy. On one occasion, when he was particularly tired but would not stay in bed and rest, he said to his anxious friends, I do not work by hygienic laws. If I did, I would get nothing done. I work by the confirmation of the Holy Spirit. On the great occasion when Abdul Baha was announced at the National Convention in Chicago, the master walked down the aisle with his stride of a king. The vast audience rose as one and in breathless silence stood while he proceeded to the stage. My name is May Maxwell. The first foreshadowing reached me when at 11 years of age I experienced in my sleep a sunlight so brilliant that for one day my eyes were blinded. Again, I dreamed that angels carried me through space. Seeing light, I found it was the earth and the earth was marked with seals and one word was on the earth. Of this, I could read only the B and the H, but I knew then that these letters would transform my life. Abdul Baha himself came to my vision, a majestic figure in Eastern garb, beckoning me from across the Mediterranean with characteristic gesture. I thought he was Jesus, but two years later when Lua heard my dream, she said, this is Abdul Baha. Of that first meeting with Abdul Baha, I can remember neither joy nor pain, nor anything that I can name. I had been carried suddenly to too great a height. My soul had come in contact with the Divine Spirit, and this force, so pure, so holy, so mighty, had overwhelmed me. As we gazed on him, I realized that we could in no way comprehend him. We could only love him, follow him, obey him, and thereby draw nearer to his beauty. After five months in the United States, Abdul Baha was coming to Montreal. He had accepted our invitation. Late in the night, we met him. He was on the train from Boston. He came directly to our home, and for four days he lavished his passion and his presence before moving to the Hotel Windsor. He said to us, Do not look upon the smallness of your numbers. One pearl is better than a thousand wildernesses of sand, and especially this pearl of great price, which is endowed with divine blessing. And to me, he gave a special charge, sending in my care his two mighty tablets to this nation. One day, Abdul Baha said to my husband and I, your utmost desire was to have a child for whom thou hast prayed and supplicated while in Akka. Praise be to God that the prayer is answered and thy desire realized. 
In the garden of existence, a rose has blossomed with the utmost freshness, fragrance, and beauty. I beg of God that this little child may become great and wonderful in the divine kingdom. My name is Juliet Thompson. Let me tell you about my first meeting with Abdul Baha. We were riding in a carriage and suddenly it stopped. I knew we were at the door of the master. My heart almost ceased to beat. I felt we'd arrived too soon, too suddenly, that I was too unprepared. My unworthiness overwhelmed me. I remember a dream I had once in which I was standing in my friend Percy Grant's house and heard that the master was coming there soon, and I hid that his holy eyes might not see me. That is how I felt in the carriage. I bowed my head and sobbed. But I did go in. My first thought as I saw that figure was God Almighty. Such was the majesty and purity and then I thought, King of men, Lion of the tribe of Judah. He was sitting on the divan at the end nearest the door, and when I entered, he beckoned me to his side. As I passed him to take my seat, I wanted to kneel at his knees. My own knees almost drew me down. But fearing to be insincere, I would not yield. He took my hand in his, his so mysterious hand, so delicately made, so steely strong, currents of life streaming from it. He asked me, are you well? Are you happy? But my lips seemed to be locked. I was helpless to open them. Speak, speak to me, he said in English. A sacred passion had been growing in my heart. My heart was almost breaking with it. I said, is not my heart speaking to thee, my lord? He said, yes, your heart is speaking to me and your spirit is speaking to me. I hear, I know. Then Abdul Baha said, do not think your services are unknown to me. I have seen, I have been with you. I know them all. Do not think I have not known, I have known all. For these you are accepted in the kingdom. I bowed my head with shame and said, forgive my failures. And Abdul Baha said, be sure of this. After a moment, he said again, be sure of this. Then he dismissed me. As I passed him the second time, my knees did draw me down. My heart drew me down to his feet and I cried. I had long dreamed that I would paint the face of Christ. I went to the master to begin painting his portrait. He was seated in a dark corner, his black abba melting into the background. And again, I saw him as the face of God and quailed. How could I paint the face of God? He said, I want you to paint my servitude to God. I cried, only the Holy Spirit could paint your servitude to God. No human hand could do it. I remember that on the fourth sitting, as the master prepared to sit for the portrait, he turned to Lua and said in Persian that these sittings made him sleepy. He sat down and closed his eyes. I studied him, but found that I could not begin painting because Abdul Baha's countenance reflected the dignity and peace of the divine realm. I wept at witnessing this extraordinary moment of spiritual force flowing through the master. Then Abdul Baha became quiet again. The Holy Spirit receded and Abdul Baha the man re-emerged. He smiled at me and told me, Juliet, you must stop crying since you would not be able to paint through tears.
My name is Lua Getzinger. I visited Abdul Baha many times in a room with a view of Baji where Bahala was buried. And I would sing the hymn, Nearer My God to Thee. As I was singing, Abdul Baha would gaze out the window, moved to tears. I and my husband Edward were among the first Western pilgrims to visit Abdul Baha. When I met Abdul Baha, I ran to him, fell to my feet, and cried with joy. That night I was so infinitely happy, I couldn't sleep. I wrote to a friend, the face of the Abdul Baha is gloriously beautiful. His eyes read one's very soul. Still they are full of divine love and fairly melt one's heart. Abdul Baha, seeing with his spiritual vision my capacity to become one of the great teachers of the faith among Baha'u'llah, put something into my mouth, saying, I have given you the power to speak and loosened your tongue. Then Abdul Baha gave an exhortation into which he put such spiritual force and emphasis that it seemed as though the very walls trembled and we were hardly able to stand on our feet. Suddenly, with a great flash like lightning, he opened his eyes and the room seemed to rock like a ship in a storm with the power released. The master was blazing, the veils of glory, the thousand veils had shriveled away in that flame and we were exposed to the glory itself. Never shall I forget that moment. The flashing eyes of Abdul Baha, the reverberations of his voice, the power that still rocked the room. Then as though awakened by the Holy Spirit, Abdul Baha opened his eyes and with great power spoke to me. I appoint you Lua, the herald of the covenant, and I am the covenant appointed by Baha'u'llah, and no one can refute his word. This is the testament of Baha'u'llah. You will find it in the holy book of Actus. Go forth and proclaim, this is the covenant of God in your midst. I cried, O oh, Abdul Baha, create me, that I may do this work for thee. And from that day, I was able to speak fluently and brilliantly and without fear in any gathering because of the precious gift bestowed upon me by Abdul Baha. And on another occasion, when we were in New Jersey, I slipped away from my friends at a picnic and headed to the nearby woods. I took off my shoes and stockings, found some poison ivy, and walked right through it in my bare feet. My legs were so swollen the next day. I couldn't walk. My goal, however unusual, was accomplished. This picnic had been hosted by Abdul Baha, and I had accompanied him on much of his journey across the US. But now he had asked me to go to California on my own to help teach the Baha'i faith there. Though I wanted to do as Abdul Baha wished, I couldn't bear to leave the intense joy of his presence. So I hoped that my itchy ailment would enable me to stay with Abdul Baha a little longer. Abdul Baha, amused by my antics, gave me an apple and a pomegranate to eat. I recovered that day and soon headed west. <laughs>